Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Joe Flash, and uh, in case if you're wondering where in the world am I at, well, I'm in the little... If you may remember my reaction to uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, you'll know this is the same exact little fortress kind of area thing where I reacted to it. So hold on, maybe I'll rearrange it a little bit. Alright, here's the rearrangement. So, apparently this is actually a better angle. I kind of like this better. So, I'm in this little fortress. I don't know why I decided to come in here and do a reaction video to an episode of Death Battle in here today, but whatever. I just thought maybe today I'd put a little bit of twist. It's actually pretty early in the morning as well, actually. It's like 6.43. It's about to be 7 o'clock in a few minutes, so... My mom and dad don't even know I'm out here, but I know for the fact they'll know I'm safe. So, yeah. And you do remember probably me reacting to Cammy vs. Sonya or whatever episode I reacted to. You probably may remember me telling you all that. Unfortunately, it's going to get a little risky for me to keep doing these reaction videos because memory space is running out, the gigabytes are going up high, and that sooner or later it's going to cause a lot of storage to run out. And that will fortunately mean that sooner or later my Death Battle series reactions or maybe any other video could probably wind up coming to an end and that stuff. And if I keep hogging up too much of it, maybe making the phone get too hot and that stuff, then there's a good chance that it'll probably mess up. But I'm going to try not to do that, so like whenever... It, I need to charge it, I'll let it be in the cool room from now on, I'll put it in my mom's room and everything to work and cool off and everything and that stuff, so yeah. But anyway, enough said, you already know the drill, but I'm going to try to react to as much episodes of Death Battle as I can, while it still can, maybe until it just finally messes up and then I get to, when I, when I return I'll react to some more whenever it works again, you know what I mean, that stuff. I just thought I'd try to get as much far as I can to the Death Battle series until the videos and everything just decide to stop working. So yeah, so we're at episode 66 today, and we have Tracer versus Scout. Now, I've heard of both of these characters, at least. I remember they heard they said that this character Tracer was from Overwatch, and when they said Overwatch, then I was familiar when I remember my cousin Caleb actually has this game, and Scout, I've seen him from some crazy memes and vines on YouTube and that stuff, so that's how I seem to know him, but I didn't think he was from a game called Team Fortress. So yeah. I think it was, I think it's also a series, I don't even know if it's a series or not, but when I saw some videos from it when Markiplier reacted to it, when there was a video of it, when Markiplier was trying not to laugh challenge, I think it's a series as well, I don't even know, like I said, I have no idea, but whatever. But, I don't know any of these two characters, even though I've seen them before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it, so just maybe try to find out who they are, so. Let's go ahead and just do the shall we, so like John Cena and Triple H always say, your time is up, my time is now, it's time to play the game. Let's just go ahead and end this battle, shall we, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, let's go. Boom, can't go wrong with that death belt, baby. To be the elite, you must surround yourself with the best of the best. Whether you band together to save the world, or just a worthless plot of land. And every good team needs a good hidden runner, like Tracer, the spunky agent of Overwatch. And the scout, the Boston-born merc of Team Fortress. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ooh, 3D animation, okay. 30 years from the present, mankind would become careless. Their machine servants rose up to fight for freedom, and so began a worldwide war. But one organization stood between world peace and total chaos. Overwatch, a team consisting of the world's greatest scientists. Okay, so Overwatch is a team, all right. Cowboys and pilots, including Lena Oxton, codenamed Tracer. The youngest pilot ever Lena Overwatch's flight Oxton. program, Tracer is a okay, that's her real name. fearless flying ace. London, England, wow, good place. After helping to secure world peace, no big deal, right? She was chosen to test a new prototype fighter jet, which could teleport. But then everything went horribly wrong. Instead of teleporting from point A to B, the fighter jet accidentally transported her through time. How do you accidentally create a time machine and put it in a fighter jet? A word to the wise, this is why you use animals before moving to human trials, like I always <laughs> do. Anyway, Tracer essentially existed as a ghost, uncontrollably phasing in and out of time. It looked like Overwatch's prized pilot would be decommissioned forever. Until her teammate, good friend, and gorilla scientist Winston made a special techno doohickey to keep her locked in the present. 
This chronal accelerator doesn't just anchor Tracer's time displacement, it also gives her two different ways to manipulate her own time flow. In a really? near instant, she can zoom approximately 23 feet away. This wow. ability is not true teleportation, but instead speeds up time only for Tracer while propelling her in any given direction. What? She can briefly jump herself forward in time, though from an outside view it looks like a blur. Got it. More than that, she can also reverse time for herself with the recall ability, which returns Tracer's health and spatial position back to where they were a few seconds before. While usually recall only turns back three seconds, in some instances she's gone as far back as 15. Well, thank God cool. her weapons aren't as confusing as that shit. Sounds she cool. She carries dual rapid-fire pulse pistols as her primary pain dispensers. Each can empty 20 rounds in a single second. But what the pulse pistols have in power, they sorely lack in range and accuracy. Good thing she also has her pulse bombs. I'll put it this way. Pretty much anybody she sticks this thing to has exactly two seconds to make their peace before going to the big capture point in the sky. Tracer maximizes her unique weaponry with hit and run tactics. Oh, it's a series as well. Cool. Making her very difficult to pin down. Yeah, in addition to blinking and recalling all over the place, she can jump 15 feet in the air. She's disarmed the highly trained and literally cold-blooded assassin Widowmaker, protected the successfully disarmed Widowmaker, death, and even once avoided a sniper shot from just 30 feet away. A sniper round usually travels almost 1,800 miles per hour when fired, meaning Tracer had to react within one hundredth of a second. Unfortunately, that bullet found another target. Ah, rest in peace, Robot Gandhi. Although Tracer is a slippery opponent on the battlefield, her crew Probably, I guess that wasn't the wisest move to do that, teleport them. many times in succession, it can overheat, forcing Tracer to wait for a recharge. As her pistols are linked to the accelerator, this can sometimes cause them to overload as well. Plus, Oof. she's a pilot first, and not exactly a crack shot while on foot. If she doesn't get in close, she's not hitting anything but air. In spite hmm. of that, Tracer doesn't let any of it get her down. Wherever there is danger, she'll be there in a blink of an eye with a cocky smile and a barrage of bullets. Boy, whatever happened to that time warping fighter jet? I don't know. Uh, don't worry, Maps. Have a good day. Huh. I don't even know what that cutie looked like Justin Bieber was thinking. An extremely wealthy entrepreneur passed away, leaving his family land and business to his two sons. But like brothers are prone to do, they ended up fighting over each other's land right off the bat. This went on for decades, and then the brothers began recruiting mercenaries to literally wage war. And that's when things really got out of control. Each hired gun contributed with their own specialized expertise. The sniper killed from afar, the engineer slaughtered with machines, and the heavy mowed people down with the biggest goddamn gun they'd ever seen. <laughs> what kind of sandwiches were they feeding that guy? But every man only relied on his cutting, his two feet, and a baseball bat. This was the scout. Born in Boston, Massachusetts in the 1950s, the mercenary only known as Boston, scout Massachusetts. Was the wow. Seven older brothers. And all of them loved to wander the town looking for a good fight. Problem was, Scout's brothers were so big and tough, the fights would be over before he could get the chance to throw his own punches. I gotta look like Nick Fury almost from Marvel. Scout realized that what he lacked in strength, he could make up for in speed. So he started running, and running, and running, until one day he was fast enough to not only keep up, but get ahead. Speed was his moniker, delivering pain Whoa. was his game, and so this guy can apparently break dance. jump off of thin air. Suddenly, the pathetic runt of the pack became the smart mouth terror of Boston. Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. The only thing he was lacking was discipline, which he could get in the military, but that didn't sound like any fun, so he became a mercenary instead. Scout travels light, relying on a lovely shotgun and a baseball bat. Yes, hmm. a baseball bat. This guy is crazy enough to try and take out a rocket launcher wielding soldier with a pop fly. Which surprisingly works. Opponents are stunned by the size of his balls, both literally and figuratively, leaving them open for Scout to race up and his guns. Well, he's got a Boom. pistol for pinpoint accuracy. Scout's favorite tools for killing are definitely shotguns. The scatter gun is a confusing miracle of shotgun engineering that can somehow hold six shots in a double barrel and is reloaded wow. via divine intervention when you pull its lever. 
Okay. Force of nature. Regardless, hmm. a well placed shot can quickly take down almost any other mercenary. To make the force of nature even more ridiculous, he can strap a can of energy drink called Monk Atomic Punch to it, which somehow gives him five more mid air jumps. That's Sorry. Cool. This guy flies. Which is going dry. But that's not all the soda has to offer. With just a sip of Monk, Scout becomes totally invincible for eight seconds. But he can't use any of his guns at that time. Probably due to the shakes. Bonk contains several hundred times the daily recommended sugar intake. And hmm. an old male suggested daily dosage is 25 grams, meaning Bonk contains, at minimum, 11 pounds of sugar. So much sugar, he can't take another drink for at least 20 seconds. And on top of that, it's radioactive. You gotta hmm. have one tough body to handle that stuff. Tough enough to survive the onslaught of three rockets at once, or to swing a baseball bat hard enough to send a guy flying 80 feet away. Possibly <laughs> a long term bonk exposure, but testing still out. Scout can defeat foes as strong as the bear with one strike. Run three rockets, but kill the blood bears of time, and even kill a bear with nothing but a hot dog suit and Amelia Earhart skeleton. God. I'm serious. He has a knack for avoiding bullets, missiles, and even tentacles from a... And I guess it looks like Team Fortress 2 is also a series as well. No armor, ...making him a glass cannon. And true to his reckless, unrestrained personality, Scout often runs headfirst into battle, regardless of the risk. But if you want to take down the Scout, you're going to have to catch him before he catches you. And that means you too, ladies. <laughs> Dance like fancy pants myself. So why don't you take your little failure, roll it up sideways, and... Okay, crap, I gotta go. Screw you, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the combatants wow. are set. Let's end this debate all right, once then. and for all. But first, I'm feeling pretty hungry. If only there was some sort of amazing service that... Sent He's doing that dance. Oops. Oh, hey. Sorry, I was trying to demonstrate that dance that Scout was doing. Sorry, commercial interruption, but I was trying to do that dance that Scout was doing. I remember that dance. I think it's called the Carlton Dance, I believe, I think. Yeah. I've seen Alfonso Ribeiro do that a few times in America's Finest Home Videos. So, I don't think I'm really going to care about this battle too much, unfortunately, because I don't know any of these two characters or other games or anything, but yeah. Kind of like Meta versus Carolina, I'm not really going to care about it too much, but it's okay, you know. I mean, I'm pretty sure this battle will still be alright, you know, so yeah. But, so this will be kind of a hard decision to make, so I'm really going to have to pick one or the other. I don't even know. Like I said, I don't know any of the two games better than the other and that stuff, so I don't know which, who to go for. But I gotta vote for someone, so let me think. You know what? I might as well just go with Tracer from Overwatch. Maybe Tracer might win this, so let's resume. Five, four, three, two, one. I guess I'm just doing it for the Overwatch fans, you know. So I'll just go for Tracer. So just for the, I'm doing it for the Overwatch fans. Sorry for Team Fortress 2 fans for not voting for Scout. And there's Scout. Oh, there's Tracer. Oh my god! Don't Scout. Scout, don't. <laughs> Thanks. 
Alright, well, here we go. I feel almost a little bit bad for Scout for having to fight this girl since apparently he seems to have a crush on her, but eh. It's not the best, it's not really the good, not always a good idea to have a crush on someone, so I guess. <laughs> He's gonna pay for it. I am going for Tracer, so let's see how she does. Okay, Tracer using that ricochet, like. Speed is what I call it. <laughs> well, he has survived, so he. Wait, what? Oh, you're drinking. <laughs> oh, there's that baseball bat. Oh, he never plays fair, huh? Well, that's that was a good line. Not bad. Woo! Here we go. Like I said, I may not care about this battle, but apparently it looks like it's alright so far. Oh! Oh, did that stop her teleportation power? Boom! It did say that baseball bat can't launch your opponent very far, so yeah. Oh, I'd send her flying. She even came back, too. Oh, gosh, she's bleeding. Oh, it's back on. What the? Oh, she reversed time. Oh, cool. I forgot. She, I think I forgot. I think, I don't know. I, I think they said she could reverse time. That's cool. She reversed time. Well, here we go. Now Trace is back on fire. Healed herself by traveling. Boom! Take that, Scout. Ooh, now he's bust a little bit busted open on his face. <laughs> Not this time, Yankee. <laughs> that was cool. Oh. <laughs> I did see blood, so yep, he died. You're dead, Scout. All right, get on, Tracer. And he's out. Scout was fast and tough, but Tracer's unique arsenal and evasiveness pulled her ahead. Scout's greatest feat was potentially surviving an assault from three rockets at once. However, the rocket's point of impact is never directly shown, and since direct hits from rockets regularly obliterate far tougher mercs, it's unreasonable to assume this was any different. Scout could sprint up to 17 miles an hour for an extended period of time, which is slightly faster than the average human's 15 miles per hour. But Tracer's natural reactive instinct gave her the edge. Mm -hmm. For example, avoiding that sniper round from 30 feet away means she can react 25 times faster than the vast majority of other human beings. God. almost anything Scout threw at her. Even when she couldn't, her recall ability not only crazy. Her survive, but effectively ruined any of Scout's elements of surprise. This allowed Tracer plenty of opportunities to take him out. And just like that, Scout was gone without a trace. The winner is <laughs> Without a trace. <laughs> okay, that was good. <laughs> Alright, good job, Tracer. That was a good one, Boomstick. Alright, who's that? Oh, Ken! Ken from Street Fighter, all right. Ken Masters, all right. Like I said, I don't know Street Fighter too much, but I am. I've seen it a few times where I've heard about Ken. All right. Plus he's he's also plus he's another Street Fighter character that's in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So yeah. Okay, so Ken from Street Fighter, all righty. I'll take it. I may not be much of a Street Fighter fan, but it's all right. It's all right. I don't mind it. And of course, you got an idea for a death battle? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks, guys. Hopefully next time we'll be able to get to find out who... Hopefully next time we'll get to find out who Ken's opponent will be for the next battle. So apparently Ken from Street Fighter will be next. But unfortunately we'll have to find out who his opponent will be for the next time. So that'll be it for today, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike, give it a thumbs down. Join me next time for the next video, uh, Reaction of Death Battle. But until then, this is Joe Flash signing off. And have a good day.